Hello, today we're talking about fruit, what it's got to do with you and the command that God gives us to be fruitful and to multiply. Over the last year, Elm Park Baptist Church have been asking a question and this is a question that you can ask yourself wherever you live whatever church you're part of or if you're not part of a church ask this question what would it look like if God's kingdom came more fully to the area where I live we're thinking specifically of Elm Park here in London could be where you live but what would it look like if God's kingdom came more fully in your home in your family in the street where you live in the the workplace in your leisure wherever it is And then we ask the next question, what does God want Elm Park Baptist Church to look like in three to five years time? And as we began to ask that question, we listened to God, we listened to each other and we came up with four different uh, ways that God wants us to be. A church that knows him, a church that grows, a church that includes and a church that engages and so the first one that we looked at is a, is a knowing church, a church that knows Jesus. That's the basis of everything that we do. It's about having a relationship with him, not a religion, but a relationship that's based upon love and that we love God and we love each other and that we know Jesus and we follow him and we do what he says and we learn to live uh, in a community of people that are individually hearing from Jesus and following him and putting this into practice. And also as a community together, we are learning to hear from Jesus, to follow him and to obey him. And today we're going to think about the next part of this, which is to be a growing church, a church that is growing. God wants Elm Park Baptist Church to be a growing church. A church that is increasing in our faith and growing in our relationship with God, but also growing in number. Last uh, Sunday, we shared about the story that Jesus told in Matthew 13 about the four different types of soil. Um, There was a closed heart. There was a crowded heart. There was, uh, sorry, there was a closed heart. There was a shallow heart. There was a crowded heart. And there was a good heart. And the good heart stands for those who hear the message, understand it, put it into practice. They know Jesus, they have a relationship with him. But then it says they go on to bear fruit. They multiply 30, 60 and 100 times what was sown. Right at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, God creates the heavens, the earth, everything. And he creates this world. And it says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. But interestingly, he makes all of creation and he makes human beings... And it says in verse 27 of chapter 1, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We're talking here about mankind, which is inclusive of of male and female. And that together we reflect the image of God, that we are the image bearers. And then he says, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply be fruitful and multiply fill the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth this does not mean that we are to become cruel tyrants it means basically that God is saying I want you to look after and take care and be good stewards of the earth to rule it as loving servants in cooperation with me because we are made in God's image. So the first thing that he says is to be fruitful and to multiply. I've got lots and lots of fruit with me today. And we're going to think about what that means to be fruitful. Yeah,
I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The command to be fruitful and multiply is a command that goes all the way through the Bible. In fact, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 9, when Noah comes out of the ark, God repeats this creation mandate to him. And it's this sense that God is going to continue. It says, God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and so we are to spread out we are to increase in number and we are to be a blessing we are to bring the blessings of God to be fruitful uh, fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control those things are growing within us, the fruit of the Spirit. And you imagine your life as a tree, and on that tree are lots and lots of different fruit, not for your own benefit. They're for other people's benefit. They're going to reach out and grab that fruit. We are to be fruitful. We are to be a blessing. We are to put into practice what God has called us to do. Genesis 12, God repeats that creation mandate to Abraham. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. God says to Abraham and Sarah, I will bless you. You will be a blessing and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. This is God's plan and he repeats it all the way through the Bible. Isaac, 
and, and Jacob and every and Joseph and, and, and the descendants on it are given this commandment to be fruitful and to multiply. What would be the point in having a fruit tree that never bore fruit, that just stood there, or even um, w was, was producing very little fruit on that tree? The purpose of being fruitful is that we will bless other people, that we will help other people. And the question to ask is, how do we do that? How do we become fruitful? Uh, how do we go from 30 to 60 to 100 in terms of our influence, in terms of spreading out, in terms of multiplying and seeing more numbers? And the secret is what Jesus says in John chapter 15, is that we remain in Jesus. Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. The only way to bear fruit is to remain in Jesus, to have a relationship with Jesus, to be in that it's a sense of recognising that we can't do it. It's not just about trying to become a good person, trying to help people. No, it's about allowing Jesus to flow through us to others so that we are bringing him to them, that we are bringing the blessings of God, that we are being fruitful. Jesus says, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's a strong statement, isn't it? Just take take on board that for a minute apart from Jesus I can do nothing apart from Jesus you can do nothing what that means is we can do nothing of significance unless the Lord builds the house the builders labor in vain Psalm 127 that our life can be fruitless our life can be meaningless our life could just be going through the motions. Our church could just be going through the motions year after year after year. Just being church, just running church in a maintenance mode. Jesus wants us to be fruitful so that we are expanding our influence, that we are spreading out and bringing the good news into a much wider group of people that at present are not connected with church or God or anything else. And so we, the only way to do that is to remain in Jesus, see ourselves as a branch and we're connected and to Jesus. And he is flowing through us so that our lives are lives of fruit, love, that we go and love people, joy, that we have his presence and his joy, whatever the circumstances is, peace, that we have his peace within us. And that we're able to go and bring love and healing and power and change wherever we are. That we are fruitful disciples. God wants you to be fruitful. God wants Elm Park Baptist Church to be a fruitful church. And it, he wants us to grow in our relationship with him. To know him, to follow him, to obey him and to be growing. Okay, I feel like I'm making an educational video now. But imagine if there's some fruit. Now, there's a difference between adding and multiplying. God says to be fruitful and multiply, 30, 60, 100. So if you have a fruit and you add another fruit to it, one plus one, I'm not very good at maths, but makes two. So we have two fruits. What if we add another fruit to it? So we have three fruits. What if we add another fruit to it? So we have four fruits. What if we add another fruit? We have five fruits. 
you see how that could go on. We could keep adding. But God doesn't say add. He says multiply. So there's a difference between adding and multiplying. Let me illustrate this. One fruit and another fruit is two fruits. So what if he said two times two? Well, that makes four fruits. What if you said four times four? Well, that makes 16. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That is very different. We've not actually done many steps yet, and yet we have multiplied. God wants us to multiply so that there is a massive harvest. In Matthew 13, Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven being like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds. You can't even see it in the palm of your hand. And yet it grows to become this enormous tree. That's what God wants for each one of us, that we would multiply. If you said 16 by 16, that would be a big number. And then multiply that next number and multiply that next number. Be fruitful and multiply. In John chapter 4, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. God wants us to multiply. God wants us to look out and see the fields, to see the people who are lost, the people who desperately need God, the people who are in pain, the people who are sick, the people who are suffering with financial problems, the people who have mental health issues, the people who are trying to live as best they can, but they can't make it. They need God. They need the power of God to change their lives. They need to live in a Christian community where they can share and be supported and helped. They need their marriages to be helped and blessed. We need to look out and we need to see with God's eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I may see you, that I may see. Jesus said he looked out and he saw the crowds and he was filled with compassion because he saw them as sheep without a shepherd we need to have God's heart if we want to multiply as a church that we want to grow as a church that we want our influence to get bigger that we want to spread out that we want to see many many more people experiencing the kingdom of God experiencing God's love experiencing his wonderful power to change us and to help us to give people meaning to give people purpose so that people are not lonely living on their own, that people are living in community, in families, that families are supported, that children can play safely. This is the vision that God has for his kingdom, that we are fruitful and that we multiply and that many, many more people are coming into the kingdom and knowing about the goodness of God. You are blessed to be a blessing. Let's spend a moment now just reflecting on this wonderful fact that God this week wants to flow through me. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. We need to remain in him. We need to come to him so that we will bear much fruit. We may even need to allow Jesus to prune us of the areas that are not bearing fruit. Many of the things that we do as Christians and followers of Jesus do not bear fruit. They're not fruitful. They're just activities that we keep doing over and over again. We need to allow God to prune those in our lives so that we can be even more fruitful. We may have seen some fruit, but God wants us to be even more fruitful. So let's just spend a moment now and, and pray. Say, Lord, I am blessed to be a blessing. Let's say that together. I am blessed to be a blessing. Use me this week, Lord, as I remain in you, as I remain connected to you. 
flow through my life. Cut off anything in me that is not bearing fruit, that requires pruning. I want to be a disciple that is fruitful. I want to multiply. I want my influence, your influence through me to, to grow greater. That I can bring your goodness into my family. That I can bring your goodness into the street where I live. That I can bring your goodness into my workplace on the connections that I have. Wherever I am this week, I want to be a blessing. I want to br bring fruit. I want to bring change. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Self-control. I give myself to you this week, Lord, to be fruitful. And I trust in you that you will multiply in Jesus' name. Amen.